Hey guys, Woodruff here. So now let's talk about otosclerosis. So otosclerosis is a um, ear disorder. And this goes back to what I was talking about when I was talking about um, uh, what do you call it? bone conduction versus um, air conduction. Um, so uh, what otosclerosis is, is, um, and remember, I also said that all the ear disorders are either a hearing problem, a um, balance problem, or a hearing and a balance problem. So for otosclerosis, this is the one that is just a hearing problem. Um, and so there's no balance issues that come with this. So that might help you to remember um, this one better. So stuff to know about otosclerosis, I'll get back to the air versus bone conduction thing soon, I promise. Um, <clears throat> but what um, the issue here is, is, is that this is a hereditary disorder. So this is not about noise. This is not about some sort of exposure that they've had um, that's led them. It's not about infection, drugs, other stuff. It's just a hereditary malformation of the bones in the ear that allow for normal air conduction. So remember when I said with air conduction, what happens is air, um, you know, as I'm talking now, vibrations are happening and they're going into your ear. Um, they go in through your tympanic membrane and then there's bones after that tympanic membrane and these bones like shift in a way that carries those signals into um, the other structures of the ear which allows for transmission of you know uh, whatever message I'm sending um, but um, what happens in otosclerosis is those bones um, they have a bony overgrowth which leads to poor conduction um, through the air where they can't send those same signals um, and so this is usually going to happen in younger people like you know it's caught pretty it's usually caught pretty early, so it's the most common cause of hearing loss in young adults. Um, it usually occurs bilaterally, but hearing abilities may differ between um, each of the ears, like where one might be a little bit better than the other. Like in other words, they usually say like one progresses faster than the other, like the hearing degeneration. The only symptom, again, this is not a balance issue. The only issue here is hearing loss. Um, and like I said, usually worse in one ear over the other. Um, I like how I have no priority assessments here. I just said priority assessments. I probably intended to put something here. So the priority assessments here should, oh, maybe it's priority assessments and the other things are supposed to be over. So my priority assessments um, are going to be an otoscopic examination um, where we're looking in, like we're using that little, uh, um, so it would it, it'd be an to it? maybe it's just an otoscope maybe i'll call it an otoscope because it sounds smart um otoscope um, we're going to use that to look in the ear and usually like us as nurses are not doing this um you know because we can't necessarily tell the difference but a um, healthcare provider is going to look in and they might notice on their um, eardrum that it has like a reddish blush or uh, kind of a red color to it which is known as swart sign um, and if they do deeper uh, in evaluations they may be able to see the actual bony changes in the middle ear um, so they're going to look for the actual problem. And then it, this is where we're going to do that tuning fork test. And it, um, I, um, hold on a sec. <coughs> I have a video on the next slide, but if you, um, uh, since I'm not going to show that video, um, definitely go and like, look this up. And so again, you want to think about with a tuning fork test, um, they're having trouble with air conduction. So their air conduction is going to be poor. So when we, you know, um, uh, like uh, rub on that um, tuning fork um, and we put it by their ear, they're not going to have good air conduction. But then when we put, uh, put it on their bone, they're going to have good bone conduction because bone conduction actually bypasses the bones in the middle ear. So even if you have a problem with your bones in your middle ear, ear bone conduction conducts hearing um, you can't see but behind the ear on this bone behind your ear and bypasses all the normal pathways for hearing um, and goes straight and can send signals to your brain so these people have good bone conduction but poor air conduction like i said um the um the tuning fork test like seeing um this is a little bit help is pretty helpful um, so we know that, um, you know, with um, otosclerosis, that it's getting better if their hearing is improved. But of course, it's worse if their hearing is declining. So medically, what we do is we're trying to improve their hearing. So we can do things to actually support their bone growth, like sodium fluoride um, can help to um, improve their uh, bone um, health and um, help with that bony malformation. Um, a lot of patients end up um, with a hearing aid um, to help them long term, um, or there's surger laser surgical treatment where they can actually have like a, a stapedectomy or that bone that is... Um, malformed, it can be replaced. 
So pretty much um, like think of it like a like getting a knee replacement, but in your ear. <laughs> trying to make it fun, guys, trying to make it fun. Um, so postoperatively, um, again, where you don't have to know that much about the surgery itself, but you do need to know about what you're going to do for the patient who has this. Um, and so the patient now remember normally just general symptoms of otosclerosis, there's no vertigo, but after the surgery, because we're messing with the middle ear, they can have vertigo after the surgery. So just provide for safety or if they're getting nauseous vomiting, then they may need some antiemetics. We're going to avoid all the same things. Remember all the things for intraocular pressure that we want to avoid, like the bending, coughing, sneezing, stooping, straining, blah, blah, blah. Um, we want to avoid all those, the same things, increased pressure in the ear. So we want to avoid all those after um, ear surgery too. Let them know that their hearing may be worse initially, but it should start to improve. Um, and then all of the hearing aid education I provided in the last video um, and any medication education they may need. Um, you don't really have to know in depth about the sodium fluoride and stuff like that. Just know that it's one treatment that might be used. Um, but that's pretty much otosclerosis all summed up for you. The next video will be about Meniere's. See you guys there.